One of the real issues I'm having at the moment is that of information overload. I consume a lot of content every day, whether it's through reading books, whether it's through watching YouTube videos, whether it's reading articles online, or listening to podcasts. The problem is I consume so much of this information, I don't actually know what to do with it or where to put it all. That is where building a second brain by Tiago Forte comes in. I have a video on this book already on the channel up there in the corner somewhere, so go ahead and check it out as well. Basically, the idea is that we need to compile all the key points of the information we consume and store it all so that we can use it in the future whenever we might need it. This second brain system claims to solve all the problems caused by information overload. I've been using my own second brain system now for a while and I've seen major improvements in my recall, my idea production and my capacity for learning. The key concept around building a second brain is the code method. Code stands for capture, organize, distill and express. In the rest of this video I'm going to show you around my own second brain and hopefully you can use some of the ideas and some of the things that I use to create your own second brain. Let me know down in the comments if you've already done your second brain and how you went about doing it. I'd love to hear some other ideas about it. So the first step is about capturing everything that resonates with you. We don't need to capture every single thing that we read, watch or listen to. Instead we need to kind of think about the key points about what a certain podcast is telling us, what a chapter in a book is telling us and write those things down instead. There are a few ways that I do this in my own second brain. Firstly, for little quick notes that I can open up really easily and really quickly and just start typing, I use Google Keep. There's a little plus button in the bottom corner of the app, which allows you to create a note straight away. So you don't have to start opening up apps, start opening up notebooks and start typing big long paragraphs. I use Google Keep the most because I just press the button, start typing and then save it. And that is ready for me to use later on. Anything that's a bit bigger and that isn't just a small note, I would use Google Docs. There's some occasions where I might have written something in Google Keep, but I want to expand on it later. I want to add something to it. So I would then transfer it from Google Keep into Google Docs, ready for me to write a bit of a longer paragraph or a few more sentences about. Using Google Docs allows me to use a word processor that I can kind of expand everything on, which is great for me because I like to come back to things that I've already read and kind of add more information or add other relevant points to it. Another really key capturing element is that of the Amazon Kindle. Everybody already knows you can highlight certain points of an Amazon Kindle which is really useful and really helpful whenever you want to capture key points. Everybody has one of these as well so use it to your advantage. Everybody has a voice memo app, a camera on their phone so take pictures of everything that you can. You can take screenshots I know that there's not a day that goes by where I don't take a screenshot of something I've read or take a picture of something that I've seen out and about. It's one of the most effective tools that you can have for capturing information with and it's really underused I feel. So use your phone as much as you can. It's there for a reason. So let's put it to a good use instead of wasting our time on it. Whenever I first started to capture all this information, one of the major pitfalls I found was capturing too much. You only need to capture information that really resonates with you and that is truly noteworthy. Through building my own second brain, I realized that we need to utilize every bit of technology that we have around us. Although I mainly use the Google suite of apps, there are loads of others People use Notion, people use Notability, people use Evernote. There's loads of apps out there. The important thing is to pick what suits you. Tiago Forte has himself said that there's not a perfect note taking app out there. Just find what works for you. After you've captured all the key information and all the key ideas that you've had, it's now time to organize them. We need to treat our digital environment like our physical environment. I don't know anybody who likes stuff scattered all over the place. I personally, love organization. I have everything on my computer in files, which are inside files, which are inside files, so that I know where everything is. And this is the same for my second brain. As I capture everything using Google Apps, it's really easy for me to transfer things between different apps and programs. It's just something which I find is more convenient for me in my everyday life. Everything ultimately ends up in my Google Drive. As you can see here, I have four different folders in my Google Drive linked to my second brain. I have projects, areas, resources and archives. So this projects folder is stuff that I'm working on right now. These projects always have a beginning, an end and a specific period of time that I'm working on them for. So anything that has a deadline to it is really in your projects section. As you can see, I'm currently working on four different projects and everything linked to these projects is contained in the relevant folder. If I go into the area folder, these are things that I'm committed to over a longer period of time. This is an overarching category where projects I'm not actually working on right now are kept, ready for me to use at a later date. These usually have a more general focus instead of being linked to a direct niche project. For example, a project might be to lose one stone in weight, but the area would be health or weight loss. Next is the resources folder where everything that I want to use in the future, which hasn't been put into an area, 
which hasn't been linked to a project is kept. This includes topics that I'm actively interested in right now, but I haven't got round to doing a project on or putting into an area. For example, any holidays that I might want to go on in the future are kept in here because I haven't actually started the process of planning them or booking things, but they're still things that I want to do. Finally, we have the archives folder, which is where everything that I've already completed or anything that I'm not working towards or anything that I don't want to do is kept. This is kind of cold storage for all your ideas and information about certain topics. Depending on what you capture your notes on, you're gonna be using a different program than me when it comes to organizing. But the important thing is to use the Paris system. So project, areas, resources, archives. Use this and use it effectively. Everything in your notes apps should be put into one of these sections, whether it's something you're working on now, something which you're working on later, or something that you're not working on at the minute. Organization is key in your second brain. And to be honest, if you're not organizing your second brain, you're really missing out on a lot of productivity. Next up is the distill section. If I take longer notes on something that I've read in a book or something that I've heard in a podcast, I need to break this down into smaller chunks so that it's more manageable for me to use. This is a major benefit of having a digital second brain. It's really easy to highlight the key points of whatever you've captured. As you have already seen, I use Google Docs and Google Docs makes it really easy just to highlight whatever it is and change the color of it so that you can see clearly the key points of whatever information you have captured. How any bits of your notes act as waypoints on your journey to whatever you're trying to accomplish. Obviously, if you start highlighting every single thing that you have written, this isn't gonna help you at all. Highlighting is a skill that needs to be developed and it's something which I struggled with at the start as I would have highlighted everything and then come back to it and it didn't really help me at all. I may as well have just not taken any notes at all. A little tip I have which really helped me out is to never highlight something unless you're ready to use it. This allows you to have a clear purpose and a clear focus as to why you're highlighting this bit of information. Final stage of the code method is express. There's no point in having a second brain, compiling all your notes, getting all your information together and organizing it if you don't actually use it in any way. This stage is all about just getting stuff out there for other people to see. When you publish an unfinished piece of work, it gives other people the opportunity to have an input on it and to help you out or to give you some constructive criticism, which will ultimately make your work better. I know that I've said this in a few videos before, but it's similar to getting into your car at your home and not leaving your driveway and not starting your journey until you know that every single light on your journey is green before you reach your destination. That's just completely unrealistic and is something which we kind of need to get over. Instead of waiting for everything to be perfect on our journey, we just need to start and get going. And then if something comes back to us or something stops us, we need to just deal with it then and there and then move on once we have overcome that hurdle. Getting your work out there can be as simple as just talking to a friend or family member about it and seeing what they think. Another way to think of it is like this. Each idea that you have in your second brain is like a block of Lego. If you just have one block of Lego and one single idea, you can't really build much. But once you start to compile ideas and get ideas and resources off others, you suddenly start to compile this massive Lego, which you can then build into whatever you want. This is the same with your notes and ideas. The more notes and ideas you have, the more things you can do with it. Again, we all have our phones on us. We all have laptops, computers, you name it, we probably have it. And you already have the apps and websites and resources that you need to start expressing yourself. Some of the websites I use are Twitter, Reddit, Pinterest, and my own website, which you can find at www.johnnyboyd.com. That is how I built my own second brain. Also let me know in the comments how you've created your own second brain, if you have done it already, and what apps you use and how you use them. I'd love to develop my own second brain further and would, again, Love your input in doing that. Finally, if you've made it this far, thanks for watching. Why not consider subscribing to the channel for more content just like this. Finally though, thanks for watching again and I will see you very soon for another video. Goodbye.